So, I will be it's more like an application of whatever we have studied till now. So, we will use linear algebra to understand the solutions of certain differential equations. So, there is this brilliant book by Hirsch and Smale which is called Differential Equations Dynamical Systems An Introduction to Chaos. This book is just beautiful. So, till I read this book I personally dislike differential equations a lot. So, but after I read this I think it is quite beautiful. So, I highly recommend this book to anybody who wants to understand various ideas in differential equations. So, yeah. So, what is the simplest differential equations that we have we can think about? Huh? The derivative is 0 is the simplest obviously, but derivative equal to 0 means the solution is also trivial what you get is you get constant functions. So, the simplest differential equation is derivative is 0. Okay. The next level of complexity is this particular equation you get I am I will use x as my function for reasons which you will soon understand. So, the next level of complexity is d of x of t by dt. So, x is a function of t. So, the derivative of x with respect to t is a times x. This is the next level of complexity. Constants after constants come linear maps. So, the derivative is a linear map. And this is this only depends on the first derivative of uh, x such things are called first order differential equations. Differential equation e equation because there is we are equating two things. Okay. It is called first order because it depends only on the first derivative. If suppose we have a similar equation of the form say d square x of t by d t square uh, equal to some f of x then I would call this second order differential equation. And since this is a linear function, we call this linear first order, uh, first order linear differential equation. So, these are the some adjectives that we will use with this uh, equation. So, this is the simplest uh, example of a differential equation. And I am sure you all know what the solution to this differential equation is. Exponential. So, exponential we know that if you take uh, if you differentiate exponential uh, the exponential map you get itself correct. So, but the a will become 1 in that case. If you want this a to come out then we have to so e power x if you take derivative. So, d by d x of e power x is equal to uh, d, uh, okay, let me put t. So, d by dt of e power t is equal to e power t. If we had an a here, then we, we, that a will come out. Correct? Why is that? This is so called chain rule. So, d by dt of e power a t is equal to the differential the dip, the derivative of e power, e power x and the derivative of a t. The derivative of a t is a. You take the product of these two. So, this is called chain rule. By chain rule, we will get that d by dt of e power a t is e power uh, a into e power a t. Correct? So, this is a solution. We can make this slightly more general. Instead of taking e power a t, I could have taken k e power a t. Still, I will get the same thing. Correct? So, this is the most general solution of this type of an equation. So, the general solution of this equation is k into e power a t. Fine. <coughs> So, this is a curve with respect to x and t. Let us 
see how this curve looks like. There are various cases. First of all, we can uh, let's say A is um, if A is positive, if A is positive, then what happens? If A is positive, then as T tends to infinity, this thing will become bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? I, I, let's assume the K is not there for the time being. If A is positive, then E power T becomes bigger and bigger. It will go to infinity. And as T tends to minus infinity, it goes to zero. Right? Because e power so, so t being negative so instead of t being negative i put it as minus t so it will become e power minus at and t tending to positive infinity so e power minus at is nothing but 1 by e power at so e power at goes to 0 so 1 by e power at goes to 0 so e power at goes to infinity so 1 by e power at goes to 0 correct so this thing goes to uh, 0 as t tends to infinity and uh, uh, 0 as t tends to, uh, sorry, infinity as t tends to infinity and uh, 0 as uh, t tends to minus infinity. Now, if k was positive, this is what happens. So, earlier we, when I, uh, when I hit the k, that means that k is 1. So, this is what happens when k is positive. When k is negative, again, as t tends to minus infinity, it will still go to 0 because this being negative or positive has no role. In, in like a, a, a thing which is becoming a, a positive number or a negative number which becomes smaller and smaller will eventually go to zero. But on the other hand, if k is negative and t goes to infinity, then this quantity will go to minus infinity, not plus infinity. Correct? So depending on k is positive or k is negative, we will get different solutions. And how fast is it going to infinity or minus infinity? It's going at exponential rate, that means really fast. So a typical example, a typical solution curve, this is a curve, so let us say this is t and this is x, I can draw a solution curve for this. A typical solution curve for a fixed k and a fixed a will look something like this if k is positive and it will like look like this if k is negative. Right? It can be something like this or something like this or whatever. Correct? So, this is the case when A is positive. Now, the case when A is negative. If A is negative, the direct opposite happens. As T goes to minus infinity, okay, it will go, to, it will become bigger and bigger. And as T goes to infinity, it becomes smaller and smaller. So, you will get the exact opposite uh, picture. You will get something like this and something like this. Depending on this is for k uh, less than 0, this is for k greater than 0. Similarly, this was for k greater than 0 and this is for k less than 0. So, this is how a typical solution will look like. Okay. So, we qualitatively understand the solutions of this. So, this is how qualitatively this is how a solution will look like. We have completely understood this, uh, this kind of a differential equation. Now, this is too simple. Of course, I did not like to the understand this you certainly do not need linear algebra or anything like that. So, this is certainly not my main theme. But the main theme is analogous to this. So, what is the next general, next general case of this? There are two ways of going this. You can make this function more complicated, okay, or you can increase the number of functions. Now, making this function complicated is certainly interesting, huh? or you, you can also increase the order of the uh, differential equation. That is also an interesting way of increasing complexity. So, there are three ways of in, uh, in, in, in increasing uh, the complexity of this differential equation. You can increase the order, you can increase the number of variables, that means number of functions that depend on t, and you can also make these fu this function more complicated. Now, since we are in, a, since the, the idea is we are obviously in, in, a, in a linear algebra class, it is obvious that I will be uh, increasing the number of variables and not any of the other. Okay? So, instead of looking at uh, just one function 
x of t, I will look, look at a system of equations, say x i of t d t is equal to a 1 x 1 plus etcetera up to a n, either it should be an i everywhere. So, this a 1 depends on the i. i. So, for each x i, I have such an equation. So, this will be called a linear differential equations in n functions. Correct? So, this is the this is one generalization of this theorem, so this uh, this same kind of thing. Again, it is linear. I could have taken this to be say some f of x1 to xn, but even in this case I did not deal with the, that. So, obviously, I would not deal with this. And again, I will simplify the, uh, the issue. Even further, I will not take I will not take an arbitrary m. Okay, let's go step by step. I will we, we will be studying the case when n is equal to two. So n equal to one is done. Let's study n equal to two. Just one level more difficult. We will see that in that itself there is lot to learn. Okay, and the, the ideas for n equal to two illustrates what happens in the n equal to uh, the general case. So, what happens is, is actually holds true even though I would not prove any of those. Whatever happens in the two dimensional case holds in the general case, general n case. So, let us deal only with that case. And since we are doing with only two variables, I want to put x1, x2, instead I will put x and y. Generally, that is what we do, right. So, I will put, so the equation looks like x, x dash is equal to a x plus b y and y dash is equal to c x plus t y. You will immediately realize that you can write this as x dash comma y dash is equal to a b c d into x y. So, this is nothing but, so if this is, this was x. Okay, this vector is called x and this matrix is a then then this is nothing but so if this so if this matrix is x then this matrix is nothing but x dash right we are taking when you take derivative uh, derivative of a uh, such a function you take component wise derivative so this is nothing but x dash so what we are the equation is of the form x dash is equal to a times x Okay. Well, this A is of the form A, B, C, D. Simplest case. So, let that remain done. Okay. So, now we want to understand the solutions of this differential equation. Now, why is this not too restrictive? I actually claim that this is not too restrictive. This case itself is very interesting. Why is this case interesting? Because I can study second order differential equations in terms of uh, like two first order equations. So, that is the interesting part of this. So, if, you, if, I, if I have a function of the form say x double dash is equal to so, x, by x double dash I mean d square x of t by d t square. Okay? So, x double dash is equal to f of x comma x dash. Suppose I have such a function. Then what I can do is I can replace this second order equation by two first order equations as follows. I will define x dash is equal to y and y is equal to f of x comma y. No, y. x dash is y. Oh, sorry, y dash. Ah, sorry, yeah, correct. So, x dash is equal to y and y dash is equal to f of x comma y. So, we have two equations which gives rise to a second order equation. And in physical situations, actually second order equations are the most important. Why? Because what does force change? physics to a large extent, at least the classical mechanics is all about how force affects things. 
right so you are applying force to something and the thing moves how does it move that is what we want to study in physics and maths is to a large extent is uh, inspired by such physical problems so in physics what is what is uh, newton's i don't know second or third law the second law second law says that force is nothing but the rate of change of momentum and the rate of change of momentum happens to be mass times acceleration and this acceleration is nothing but the second derivative of the displacement right so what is happening is the important case in physics is actually say the solutions of second derivatives so this is the most important case of uh, that we require in real life and we are able to solve that using this our nice simple cute looking example so this is not too bad we are getting good enough so for example like uh, if you have i don't know how many of you have studied physics like for example uh, there is this harmonic oscillator the solution of a harmonic oscillator is a second order uh, like you, you 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 can it is actually a solution of a second order differential equation things like that so in general it's always about second order uh, differential equations so that is why this is good enough i'm justifying why we are studying this okay fine so i hope that is uh, that convinced you that it's worthwhile to study this um now let us really study this <laughs> so let us now look at um, a specific example of this case so the specific example is i will exactly follow this i will put x dash is equal to y and x is equal to oh sorry and y dash is equal to minus x simplest okay one of the simplest examples of this would be minus x what happens to this what are the solutions of this if you notice okay this is actually follows a simple thing the derivative of sin theta is cos theta the derivative of cos theta is minus sin theta it looks exactly like that and that is how i wrote it actually so if x is sin theta and y is cos theta we get the we get get this actually so the solutions of this looks like sin theta cos theta now how does this look in the plane actually of course you can multiply by a if a if you take a cos theta a sin theta and a cos theta you, that will still satisfy because a will just come out and this actually is the equation of a circle of radius a so because this sin theta cos theta that is the circle because sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 so x square plus y square is equal to 1 x square plus y square is x square yeah yeah in the, no in, in i am taking assume x is, a is equal to 1 in that case so x square plus y square is equal to 1 is the uh, equation of the unit circle in this case the more general case it will look like x square plus y square is equal to a square so this is a, actually sorry i said wrong i said of radius a but actually it will be radius a square right oh yeah sorry ah correct yeah so we we get a circle so the solutions of this will look like circles okay that is how the solutions look now how the solution will be tra uh, traversed will it be go will it go like this or will it go like this because we are actually writing a curve this is a curve not uh, uh, so there is a as time as t increases will it go like this or will it go like this so what happens to sin theta as theta increases huh as theta initially at least initially sin 0 is 0 what is sin uh, half sorry 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 sin pi by pi by 2 so it becoming it's increasing so sin is increasing right so it has to go uh, so for example here it is difficult to say let's say here sin is increasing so it has to go this way right because that is the only way sin has to be increasing and cos decreases so both are getting satisfied sin is increasing and cos is decreasing so this is what should happen but on the other hand if a was negative then 
the opposite will happen. So depending on whether A is positive or A is negative. So this is the curve for A negative and this is the case for, case for A positive. Right? Depending on A is positive or A is negative, you will get this direction or that direction. Clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction. That is how the curve will look like. I hope that is clear. Now, what was this in terms of this, this equation? That is another thing which we want to see. Right? So, this was nothing but x dash is equal to y and y dash is equal to minus x. But what was y dash? y dash was nothing but x dash the whole dash. That is nothing but x double dash. x double dash is equal to minus x. That means, in some sense, what is happening is the force is acting in the opposite direction of the displacement. Now, even if you, if you have seen it or not seen it, this is still interesting. So, I will uh, 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 explain what this is. This means physically. An example of this differential equation physically. So, what I do is you look at a you look at a spring. Okay, there's a spring and there's a mass. If you pull it to this direction, the spring will pull it back. Right? That is how a spring does. If you try to pull it away, the spring will contract. The spring will try to contract. So, as soon as I leave the weight, it will just come back. So, the force is in the, direct, in the negative direction of the displacement. Right? So, this is the equation of a spring. Now, there should be, in general, there will be a k here, which is called the spring coefficient. Okay? So, like how, how much strength the, uh, the spring has? Not every spring uh, pulls back at equal uh, strength, right? Some some springs are really uh, strong. Some springs are not so strong. There are springs which you cannot pull apart. Things like that. So how much that depends on some k. So this is a very interesting example. Okay. So this is one example. One example we have seen. Now let us see a slightly more general example. This is just too simple. I will drop it. So in this case, now my equation is A is equal to 1, 1, 3, minus 1. Okay. Let me see if this is the correct matrix I want. So we have this matrix 1, 1, 3, minus 1. Hmm? And now let us try. So basically I am looking at the equation x dash is equal to ax. So that so the equation is something like x dash is equal to um, x plus 3y and y dash is equal to x minus y. This is the equation we are dealing with. And I want to understand the solutions of this. Okay. So now, to this we will do, do a trick. Okay. The trick is that this is where linear algebra comes in. We will use eigenvectors. Okay. I claim that. Um, just a minute. Slightly confused. Uh, okay, give me a minute. <laughs> one, one, three minus one into x y is equal to two x two y. I want to solve this. So x plus three y and x minus y. X plus three y is equal to two x. X minus y is equal to two y. So x equal to 3y is the solution. Okay, This is what I want. 2 is an eigenvalue, I knew it. And that is, I am I'm doing slight cheating. I know that 2 is an eigenvalue. And from that, I am back calculating what is an eigenvector. Okay, I will tell how to calculate eigenvalue, eigenvector and all later. But I knew that 2 is an eigenvalue. Actually, this has two eigenvalues. This matrix has two eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are 2 and minus 2. Okay? And the eigen uh, vector corresponding to uh, 2 is 1, 3. And similarly, I can calculate the eigen vector corresponding to minus 2. 
1 3 1 minus 1 x y is equal to minus 2 x minus 2 y. How do I calculate that? I get x plus 3 y is equal to minus 2 x. That means minus x equal to 3 y minus x equal to 3 y and x minus y is equal to x minus y is equal to minus 2 y. That means again x equal to minus 3 y. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, the, so this way x equal to 3 y means it is of the this uh, the vector is 3 comma 1 and x equal to minus 3 y means it is minus 3 comma 1. Huh? Oh, sorry, sorry, x equal to minus y. Okay. x equal to minus y and minus x, here we will get minus x equal to, I, oh no, minus 3x equal to minus, okay, sorry, I get minus 3x equal to 3y. Sorry, I wrote this also wrong. So, it, I get minus x equal to y. Right? I get minus x equal to y and x equal to minus y. But basically, I should get the same thing both sides. That's why I was. Uh, if this is wrong, then this has to be wrong. <laughs> That's all. So then the vector is. Uh, in this case, the vector is x is equal to minus y. So it looks like one comma minus one. So one comma minus one and three comma one are eigenvectors for uh, this. So let's say has. I will wrap on this. These are all calculations which are just required to say this has eigen vectors 3 1 and 1 minus 1 with eigen values 2 and minus 2 respectively. Okay. So, I get, so this has two, uh, this thing is 3, 1 and 1 minus 1. These are two vectors, two, two eigenvectors. Okay. So, now, as soon as I have an eigenvector, I have a trick. Suppose, say for example, now, uh, that, that is the next step we, are, we will do. So, firstly, I, I, I noted that A has two eigenvectors. One is 3, 1. And another is 1 comma minus 1. These are two eigenvectors. So suppose A has an eigenvector of uh, eigenvector B with eigenvalue lambda. So that let's say A B is equal to lambda B. Okay. This means that V is an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda. Now let us see what happens to uh, suppose this happens. Then I, I I claim that I have a simple solution for this for this differential equation. Oh, I rubbed this, I do not know why. Let me write it again. x dash is equal to x plus 3y and y dash is equal to x minus y. Uh, tell me when I rub this, okay, I want this. So, <laughs> if if there exists a eigen vector for this, I claim that I have a simple solution for this. What is the simple solution? Again, it is not very surprising, but actually if you look at e power lambda t okay, into e power lambda t into this vector v, I will write this as, yeah, e power lambda t into v is actually a solution to this. If V is an eigenvector with, with uh, eigenvalue lambda, then e power lambda t into V is a solution to this. Since there is a solution, I will write this as, since there is a solution to this, I will write it, this as x naught. Because I, I was writing all the solutions in terms of x, that is all. So what I am saying is, if x naught is an eigenvector for, the, for A, with eigenvalue lambda, then e power lambda t into x naught is a solution to this equation. We will prove this. If then is a 
solution to x prime is equal to x. We will prove this. How do we prove this? What I will do is, I will just calculate. So, let us look, in, look at what x dash is. Hmm? x dash is nothing but um, so, x dash is nothing but the derivative of this. The derivative of nothing e, is, is this is nothing but e power lambda into e power lambda t into x naught. Why is this? If you are not convinced, this is, are you convinced with this? If x, x dash is not, x, if, a, a, this is, oh, sorry, x naught dash. If x, if x naught is this, if x naught, oh, sorry, if x is equal to this, if x is equal to this, then x dash is equal to nothing but lambda e power lambda t into x naught. Why is that? Because x naught is of the form some uh, x1, x2, right? And then this e power lambda t will be there in both of them. So when I differentiate that, there will be a, so basically the way to take differentiative, a different derivative, I have to uh, take derivative on both the coordinates. So I take different der derivative here, I take derivative here. Right, that's how it will look. Right, it's clear, right? So the derivative here is nothing but e power lambda times e power lambda t first coordinate and lambda times e power lambda t the second coordinate. And I can take that lambda power e power lambda t outside. Okay? So that is how I get that x dash is nothing but lambda e power lambda t into x naught. This is direct calculation. Now let us calculate ax. Okay? ax is nothing but a into e power lambda t, so this is x, okay. ax is nothing but e power lambda t into a into e power lambda t into x. Yeah, x naught, sorry. So this is nothing but e power lambda t into a into x naught. Why? Because n is linear, n is a scalar, so you can uh, take it out. So it's nothing but e power lambda t into a x naught which is nothing but x naught was an eigenvector. So, you will get uh, e power lambda t into lambda x naught. That is exactly this. So, this and this are same. So, x dash is equal to a power a x. Take two minutes to convince yourself. So, what we have done is, so in some sense what I am looking, uh, like let us try to understand this a little bit better. So, in some sense what I am doing is there is, uh, uh, it is good that uh, Pranav introduced some concepts uh, in the just previous lecture, like invariance of spaces. So, what is happening is there is a particular, uh, so when something is an eigenvector, there is a particular subspace which is getting invariant. Now, if you focus our attention to only that vector, the, the vector subspace which is uh, invariant, it is like actually learning uh, one variable uh, like, uh, it is like doing one variable differential equation, right. So, we are looking at a uh, subspace which is getting fixed and uh, I forget about the remaining part. That is what we are doing. So, that is why it works. So, do not don't think that I am cheating or anything like that. It was, the intuition is this. The intuition is th that as soon as I have an invariant subspace, it is no different from what we did earlier. And that is where this comes from. So, it is not a magic trick, it is not like uh, picking out a rabbit from the hat. It is a very calculated and it is something which anybody could have thought of. If you understood what invariant subspace are, etc, etc. So, since we did not have enough time to understand those things, perhaps you would not have thought of that. But this is how you think about it. Right? So, this is what is happening. Now, in our case, we had two uh, eigenvectors. Right? So, there are two solutions. One is, we get e power 2t into uh, 3, 1. Right? And we have e power minus 2t into 1 minus 1. Right? The general solution, I claim that the general solution looks like 
mu1 times this plus mu2 times this. Every solution looks like this is what I claim. Okay? So let me I will rub and I will write it here. So the general solution of this number is one, one is of the form mu one into e power two p into three one plus mu two into e power minus two p into three one. Actually, I will. Uh, Huh? Oh, sorry. One minus one. One minus one. Actually, to prove this, I will prove something slightly more general. Suppose there are two eigenvectors which are linearly independent. Okay. Suppose there are two eigenvectors v1 and v2 which are linearly independent. Okay. Suppose v1 comma v2 are Linearly independent. Here we can see that 3, 1 and 1 minus 1 are linearly independent. Why are they linearly independent? You can check it. Right? So you will get A, B, okay? So you will get, so 3A plus B is equal to 0 and A minus B is equal to 0. So uh, A equal, this implies that A is equal to B. And then that means that this is equal to A, hence 4A is equal to 0, that implies that A is equal to 0. Right? And since A equal to B, B is also 0. So, this, this work, this is the definition of uh, whenever A times this plus B times this is 0, A and B are 0. That is the definition of linearly independent. So, these two vectors are linearly independent. So, that is why I am doing this. Suppose we have two vectors v1 and v, uh, v1 and v2 which are linearly independent and a v1 is equal to lambda 1 v1 and a v2 is equal to lambda 2 v2, okay, then mu1 times e power lambda 1 t into v into v1 plus mu2 into e power lambda 2t v2 is a general solution of x equal to, sorry, x dash is equal to a x. Hmm? So, we have two vectors which are linearly independent and both of them are eigenvalues. Okay. As soon as there are two vectors, two eigenvectors, uh, and they are both linearly independent, we get a general solution. That's the theorem. Now we have to prove that. So I will rub this. Firstly, notice that this is a solution, and this is a solution. Right? So, firstly note that this whole thing is a solution. Is that clear? This whole thing is a solution. So, claim 1. Mu 1 e power lambda 1 t v 1 plus mu 2 e power lambda 2 t v 2 is a solution. Why is the solution? You take so, this is x equal to this, okay. So, you take x dash is nothing but mu 1 into lambda 1 into e power lambda 1 t v 1 plus mu 2 into lambda 2 into e power lambda 2 v 2, okay. But this is nothing but mu 1 into e power lambda 1 t into lambda 1 v 1 plus mu 2 into e power lambda lambda 2 into uh, lambda 2 v 2 and I bracket these. Um, this is not visible, right? 
something wrong with the pen. Okay, this is equal to mu one e to the power lambda one t a v one plus mu two e to the power lambda two into a v two. Correct, because lambda one v one is a v one and lambda two v two is a v two. They were eigenvectors, so that happens. Now by linearity we can take this inside. Take this whole thing inside. So we will get this is nothing but a into mu one e power lambda one t v one plus a into a acting on mu two e power lambda two. Sorry, there is t here. Here also there is t. E power lambda two t v two. Again by linearity of a, this is equal to a is this is equal to nothing but This plus this, but that was x. Again linear. So we use uh, here we are using v v i is eigen vector. Here we are using linearity, and here also we are using linearity. Reason v i is an eigen vector. Linearity linear. So that is how this proof works. So this now claim one is that this is the solution. Okay. So now we will try to show that this is a general solution. How do we show that this is a general solution? We will take a solution and then show that that has that has this form. Okay. That's how we will show that it's a general solution. So how do we do that? Mm, yeah. Okay. Let me try to remember. So let y of t be a solution. What I do is I take this is a trick. Okay, just a bit. Um, okay, fine. I remember. So we have so y of t is a general solution. The fact that so y of for each t we get some some a uh, point uh, y of t is a point in R two, right? For each t y of t is some point in R two. Now we know that v one and v two are linearly independent. That means every point in R two can be represented in terms of v one and v two. But that representation depends on the point. So this can be written in the form. A times sorry, A of t times v1 plus p of t times v2. Okay. Now let us differentiate this. If I differentiate this y, y, y dash of t, if I do that, we get A dash of t v1 plus v dash of t. V two. Another of way of finding y dash of t is nothing but we know that y y y dash of y is a solution to this equation y dash of t is equal to a one. So y dash of t should be nothing but a y of t. Correct. But what is a y of t? A y of t is nothing but a acting on this. If I act a on this by linearity, it will be nothing but a of t into A times v1 plus b of t into a times v2. Correct? But v1 and v2 are eigen vectors with uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2 as the eigen values. So this is nothing but a of t into lambda 1 times uh, 
v 1 plus v of t into lambda 2 times v 2. Now, remember I have proved a theorem that something is a basis if and only if every element can be uniquely expressed in terms of v 1 and v 2. Okay? If something is a basis, it can be uniquely represented in, with respect to that. Now, v1 and v2 are linearly independent in R2. That means it actually forms a basis. Right? So, this forms a basis and so every element can be represented uniquely. But this, we are getting two representations. One is a dash of t, b dash of t and other is lambda 1 a of t and uh, lambda, uh, lambda 1 a of t and uh, lambda 2 b of t. So, these two things should be same. So, we get a dash of t is equal to lambda 1 a of t and b dash of t is equal to lambda 2 b of t. And we had seen that the solution for this is, okay, the solution for this is a of t is equal to e power lambda 1 t and b of t is equal to e power lambda 2 t. Okay, the general thing was you, you have some k1, k2. This is what we started with. This equation has, this is the solution of this equation is what we started with. Right? So, this gives that a of t is k1 e power lambda t and b of t is nothing but k2 e power lambda 2 t. If you, if you put that here, we get k1 into lambda 1 v1, uh, so k1 into uh, e power lambda 1 t uh, v1 plus k2 into e power lambda 2 t, which is exactly of this form. Actually, yeah, if I had written mu 1 here, we would have exactly got that. K1, mu 1, these are all just some symbols, so it does not matter. Right? So, we get that this is a general solution. So, uh, yeah, okay. So, now we have got a general solution for this equation. Now, because of this, now we have automatically solved the uh, equation, uh, our earlier thing that a, in the case where a was 1 1, a was 1 1 3 minus 1, we had these two eigenvectors. Right? So, because of that, we get a general solution for that uh, set of equations. For x dash is equal to ax, we got a general solution. Okay? So, this is one way of solving these general. So, what have we understood? We can solve differential equations, uh, we can solve linear differential equations on the plane by looking at the eigenvalues, uh, I, uh, sorry, eigenvectors. Of course, you have to look at eigenvalues also, but eigenvectors are the important. In this case, actually the eigenvalues were dif uh, different, 2 and minus 2. But we are not using anything about the eigenvalue actually, we are only using that the eigenvectors are linearly independent. Notice that in this case the eigenvalues were different, 2 and minus 2, they are different eigenvalues, right? So, uh, 2 and minus 2 are different and actually this forces that the uh, uh, eigenvectors will be independent. That is the next thing I want to prove because I will require this. So, what I am trying to prove is that, so I am saying that whatever we saw here is a general phenomenon. As soon as uh, the eigenvectors are different, the, uh, sorry, eigenvalues are different, the eigenvectors corresponding to it are distinct. This is something which I will require, so I will prove that. So, for this I do not require two dimensional, okay. So, the, uh, the, this linear map is a general linear map, n dimensional. So, theorem. Here, if eh, if a v one is equal. 
equal to lambda 1 v 1 and a v 2 is equal to lambda 2 v 2 and lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2, then v 1 and v 2 are linearly independent. Okay? So, why is this true? So, let us look at that. We want to prove this. What is the way to prove this? I look at a sum, uh, summation of the form a 1 v 1 plus a 2 v 2 is equal to 0. And I want to show that a 1 and a 2 are 0. That is the idea. Actually, I can prove a more general uh, result. Why you, when I can prove a more general result, why not prove that? Okay? If a v i is equal to lambda i v i, even though I will refer only the two case, because I will be do, dealing always with the plane, the proof is no different whether it is two vectors or n vectors. So, if, uh, if a v i is equal to lambda i v i and lambda i is not equal to lambda j, okay, for any i and j, then v 1 to v n is a linearly independent set of vectors. Okay, I will, I just rephrased it a little bit. So, I have n, I am looking, I am looking at finite dimensional vector spaces. So, anyway. So, if we have n vectors corresponding to n distinct eigenvalues, then they are all linearly independent. That is the claim. How do I do this? So, I have an equation of the form a 1 v 1 plus a 2 v 2 plus etcetera up to a n v n is equal to 0. Oh, can I do this? Can I prove this? I think so. Let us see. Anyway, let us see. <laughs> so, now what I do is I first multiply this equation with lambda 1. Okay, actually lambda uh, lambda i. Let us multiply this with lambda i. So I multiply this equation with lambda i on both sides. Then I get lambda i a one v one plus lambda i a two v two plus etc. up to lambda i a n v n is equal to zero. So what did I do? I multiplied. 1 with lambda. This is one thing I can do. Another thing is at a on 1. So, I apply a on both sides. Okay. If I apply a on both sides, I get I it is linear, right? So, it, it will be a into a, uh, a, uh, a 1 into a v 1 plus a 2 into a v 2 plus etcetera up to a n into a v n which is equal to a of 0, a of 0 is 0. Okay? So, I get this. But now, what is uh, this uh, equation? I get this as lambda 1 v 1 a 1 into lambda 1 v 1 plus a 2 into lambda 2 v 2 plus etcetera up to a n into lambda n v n equal to 0. Okay? So, now I sub I call this equation Huh? Okay, three. Oh yeah, I already have two. Sorry. So I call it three. So now what do I do? I subtract these uh, these two equations. I subtract. I do three minus two 
If I do 3 minus 2, what will I get? I will get um, lambda i minus lambda 1, a1 into lambda i minus lambda 1 into v1 plus Just a minute, just a minute. Oh, this won't work. This proof won't work for this general case. Yeah, so generalizing the two variable case, better to do this. And act on that. Okay, let us correct it. So this uh, this proof doesn't work. This proof works if if I was taking two, but this proof doesn't work if I am taking general. Why? Let us see that. These are, these are good. So you understand how you should think. So let us wrap everything and let us try to see why this works for case two. So I get this equal to zero and this equal to zero and this is equal to zero. Okay and that will mean this is equal to 0 and this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. Okay? So, in the case where, uh, case where i is equal to 2, that my proof works. Actually, and that is what I was planning to do first. So, if you look at this, what is happening? And now, if you subtract 3 minus uh, 2, what you will get is, you will get, so let us say that this is, uh, let us fix something. Let us fix this to be lambda 1. 1, lambda 1. So, this implies that, so 3 minus 2 would give me uh, a1 lambda 1 v1 minus a1 lambda 1 v1 goes to 0 and this goes, to the, uh, so this minus this is 0 and this minus this is a2 into lambda 1, uh, sorry, lambda 2 minus lambda 1 into v2 is equal to 0. Now, v2 is a non-zero vector. So, a scalar times v2 is 0, if and only if the scalar is 0. So, this is 0. And if p into q is 0, then either p is 0 or q is 0. Right? In real numbers, that is true. If p into q is 0, then either p is 0 or q is 0. But a2 is not, uh, but uh, lambda 2 minus lambda 1 is not 0, because we assume that lambda i is not equal to lambda j. So, uh, uh, so, what is happening is lambda 2 minus lambda 1 is not 0. The only possibility is a2 is 0. Now, we could have, uh, instead of multiplying with lambda 1, I could have multiplied with lambda 2. And then if you do 3 minus, uh, 3 minus 2, you would similarly get that a1 into lambda 1 minus lambda 2 v2 is equal to 0. And again, lambda 1 minus lambda 2 is not 0. Hence, a1 has to be 0. So, this way we can conclude that a1 and a2 are both 0. Now, now that I have written the more general case and the more general case is true, let us try to prove that. Okay. So, this is also actually uh, good in some sense. Like, you will understand, like you are understanding like that certain proofs do not work in, uh, certain work, proofs work sometimes, but certain proofs does not work how you have to uh, adapt, modify it. That also is something which is interesting to learn. So, let us do that. Okay. So, what is the general case? So, suppose, without learning, so what we will do is, we will assume that, uh, so we will prove this by contradiction. So, assume that v v1 comma etc up to vn is linearly dependent then then i have actually a sum of the form a1 v1 plus a2 v2 plus etc up to an 
Vn is equal to 0 as before. Now, there are two possibilities. <coughs> A1 can be 0 or not 0. If A1 is non zero, then what I will do is, if suppose A1 is non zero, then I will write V1 is equal to A2 V2, sorry, minus of A2 V2 plus etc. up to A n V n. Uh, and uh, so A V1 is equal to this. I can write like this. And I can divide by A. So I can write this as minus 1 by A1. So I can write V1 in this form. Right? Suppose A1 is 0. Hmm? Suppose A1, if A1 is 0, then I will check if A2 is 0. If A2 is not 0, since A1 is 0, I can as well throw this. I can look at this equation. Right? So I will look at this equation, I will see if A2 is 0. If A2 is 0, I will throw away that part also. But if A2 is not 0, and A1 was 0, I can write V2 is equal to 1 by A2 into A3 V3 plus etc. Right? If not, I can write V3 as uh, V3 is 1 by minus 1 by A3, A4 V4 plus etc. etc. So there exists the smallest, so I look at so I look at if A1 is 0, if A1 is 0, I throw it away. If not, I will look at A2, if A2 is 0, I throw it away. And there will be some point, not everything can be 0. Because if everything is 0, then, then we are done. <laughs> because that means it is linearly uh, independent. So, the, uh, we are uh, assuming that it is linearly independent. So, there is something which is non zero. I take the lowest thing which is non zero. Okay? So, the most complicated case would be that A1 itself is uh, non zero. Because otherwise what is happening is the other things are linearly dependent. That's all, that's all is happening. So let us look at the case where A1 itself is non zero. It does not make a difference. So I write V1 as minus 1 by A1 into A2 V2 plus etc. up to A n V n. Okay. And now what do I do? Am I able to solve this? So I apply A on both sides. If I apply A on both sides, um, this won't work. Actually, we can do another thing. Oh, that is the trick that you should do. Ah, actually, yeah. Sorry, I will again improvise my flow. So what I'm doing is not this. What I'm doing is. If A1 is, uh, I will do the other way around. What is the other way around? I will look at this equation. If A1 is 0, then I will throw V1 out of this set. If A1 is 0, that means V1 is dependent on these other vectors. So I can throw away V1. Right? If, right? So as soon as, if a, whichever I, uh, what I do is, I look at the set of all Vi, Okay, I take a subset of this set of all vi such that ai is not zero. Sorry, ai is zero. Oh yeah, actually yeah, I have to do it step by step. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I made a mistake. Yeah, I have to do it step by step. So if suppose a1 is zero, I throw away v1. So I get a smaller set, right? Uh, if suppose even a1 is not zero, something, some aj will be. So from this, so okay, this is linearly independent means that there exists some aj which is not zero. I throw away that vj. So I get a smaller set. I get a set with n minus one element which is linearly independent. Okay, that might be independent or linearly dependent. If it's linearly independent, I, I will work with that. If that is also dependent, again there will be some aj in that which is uh, um, which is uh, non-zero. So that vector is dependent on the other things. So I throw away that also. I get an even smaller set. Like this, this process has to end in n steps. Right? Because the, uh, you started with only n elements. So after a point, it has to stop. Right? So this I will call the smallest linearly independent subset of this ve these vectors. Okay? So this is more than that. I am taking a 
subset of this, uh, which is, uh, so I will take VI1, uh, VI2, etc. up to VIK. Huh? What is that? Huh. So, is linearly independent. I am taking a subset of this, which is linearly independent. Yeah, and if you add anything else to it, it is not linearly independent. So, I am taking a subset of this which is linearly independent. Okay, and now what do I do? Hmm? Now, will it work? I am not still sure about this proof. Let us see. If it works, it works, otherwise it does not work. Okay. <laughs> so, I am trying this on the spot, so I am not sure. Because I was concerned only with two, two, the second, two case. So, I did not think about the end case, but the theorem is certainly true. If you consider the smallest case, is that the case is not being up v1 up to vk minus k dependent? Oh, the smallest case such that vk is dependent on the first? Yeah. That is certainly true. Why? Because then you can take vk as sum of k. Oh, and the other one are all linearly yeah. independent. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually I will not go into this. Let, us, let me stop it here. Okay, because I don't. That is not, this is anyway not my the interesting part for me. So let us stop. Actually, this is sort of maybe we will do it in the in the, in the tutorial session. Okay. So, uh, but I, yeah, I would like to prove this in general also. And this actually proves one of the propositions Prana wanted to prove that uh, the uh, the the number of uh, Eigen values, distinct Eigen values cannot be greater than the dimension of the space. Why? Because if you have two distinct Eigen values, the, the vectors are independent. So, you cannot have an independent set which is bigger than the dimension. That is the idea. Anyway, let us, uh, when did I start? Oh, okay. It's one hour. Uh, just a minute. Uh, do, you, do I have to say something? No. Okay, I will stop here. Ah, then I can perhaps prove this, right? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Then I will prove this and then I will stop. Sorry. So I rubbed this statement, but everybody remembers the theorem, right? So let us try to prove it. So uh, Pranav has an uh, idea. Since anyway the, the lecture is over, so let us try to prove this. So Pranav's idea is that you take this small, so we have a set V1 to Vk, so Vn, and these vi's are eigenvalues that is, uh, no, so these are uh, we, 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 we to vn are vectors such that a vi is equal to uh, lambda i v lambda i vi and lambda i not equal to lambda z. That is the property. Let me anyway first let me start at one uh, idea right. Let, let me see if that idea works. You, you, you will also understand how I think. I think it is good to understand how others think. So, there exists some subset of this, say, let us say V i 1, etc., up to V i k, which is a, so I am assuming that this is linearly dependent, and I take this to be the smallest linearly independent set contained in, in um, v1 to vk, sorry vn. Now, once I have this, I can reorder it such that i1 is equal to 1 and i2 is equal to k, right? And I can do that, right? You are getting right. So, I, so there are some elements, so uh, I, 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 you remember how I constructed this, right? You know, uh, how did I construct this? I look at this, this is linearly dependent. So, there exists, if, you, if I look at the summation a i v i is equal to uh, 0, then there exists some a j which is 0. I throw away that a, uh, that v j. Like that I get, a, uh, so I throw away that, uh, that, that vector, I get a smaller set. Again, I repeat the procedure and I stop somewhere. And that is how I got this, this uh, smaller subset. Now, I could have reordered this, I can re-number, like which, which I call V1, which I call V2 is up to me. 
So I can renumber it such that I1 is equal to 1, I2 is equal to 2, etc. up to IK is equal to K. So without loss of generality, I can assume that actually V, V1, V2, etc. up to VK is the smallest linearly independent set contained in in V1, V1, etc. up to Vn. Okay. So now what you do is you look at you take Vk plus one. Huh? So you look at Vk plus one is equal to since Vk plus one is dependent on these Vks, right? Because this must be uh, uh, so actually it's not the smallest. Ah, it's the largest. You get it, get it right. It's the I am reducing the size. And at some point it becomes linearly independent. So it's the largest set. Or it is the smallest uh, set which is uh, um, uh, which spans one of the two. It's the largest set which is linearly independent and the smallest set which spans. Right? Because if you go one more step be be below it is not, it doesn't span anymore. So whether you call it largest or smallest, it depends on whether you want to call it linearly independent or spans. Okay? So yeah, that is the thing. So now I can write Vk plus 1 as some summation Ak Vk. Hmm? Oh, sorry. A, A i V i i going from 1 to k. Now I act A on both sides. If I act A on both sides, I get A into Vk plus 1. But this is nothing but lambda into Vk plus 1. Hmm? And this is equal to a into summation i going from 1 to k a i v i okay and this is equal to summation i going from 1 to k of a i into a times v i which is nothing but lambda i v i. Hmm? This is nothing but okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So this is nothing but so, but this is nothing but this summation a i p i. Okay. Uh, huh? Yeah. With, sorry. I do lambda. Uh, Sorry, lambda k plus 1. I didn't write here lambda k plus 1. Sorry. So I get lambda k plus 1 a summation a1 v1. I going from 1 to k. Correct? So this is nothing but, uh, so this is equal to this. But now vi, I going from 1 to k was a linearly independent set. Right? But since it is linearly independent, that means that any two representations, uh, any two representation of any vector will be unique. So the, the, this and this are the same vectors. So the coordinates of this, so that means a i lambda i, a i lambda i has to be equal to a i lambda k plus 1. But I am getting lambda i is equal to lambda k plus 1. Contradiction. Yay. Yeah, for some mind. <clears throat> so, so, lunch and we will meet after lunch. <laughs>